Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to jump into DaVinci Resolve and show you how to create a 3D Earth effect with like clouds and a glow and all this sort of stuff. And although it's not going to be a super technical tutorial, I think it's going to teach you a lot on how to deal with 3D shapes in DaVinci Resolve. So let's show you what we're going to create. And yeah, we're just going to jump in now and show you how to do it. Okay guys, so let's jump into Fusion to create this effect. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new Fusion composition and we're just gonna call this Earth. Five seconds, 24 frames a second, that should be fine. I'm just gonna drag that onto the timeline and then make sure you play heads over it and jump into Fusion. All right, so here we are in Fusion. Now when working with 3D models inside of Fusion, you're definitely gonna want the double viewer open so that is just enabled by this little button here. So if you see the two rectangles, click that, you get the two viewers and vice versa. So make sure you've got that. Cool, so we're gonna create a few different objects. We're gonna start by creating the sphere, so the earth. So to do that, we're gonna hit sh shift space and we're gonna type in shape. And it's gonna bring up our shape 3D and we're gonna add that to our scene. Awesome, so make sure it's off here by itself now for a shape 3D node to be connected to a media out node, we do need a renderer. To do that, we're gonna hit shift space, add type in render, and you have a renderer 3D. So we're gonna add that to the scene. It'll automatically connect, and then we can connect that to the media out node. So this media out node here in the second hand viewer, this is what our render is going to look like once we've finished with everything. And then if you drag the shape 3D into the first viewer, this is our scene. Now navigating around 3D space can be a bit complicated. I use a Mac and a magic mouse, so I can't really explain how to do it. Currently I'm just sort of using the scroll wheel that's going up and down. If I add the command modifier, that makes me zoom in and out. And then if I add the shift modifier on top of that, then I sort of rotate around it. Yeah, it might be different for you guys just because of how my setup is. So currently we have a plane. So a plane is just a flat 3D object. It is in 3D space, but nothing special about it. Obviously we want a sphere. So if we click on the shape 3D node, you can see over in the inspector, the first option we have is the shape it is. Awesome. All we want to do is change that to sphere. Now obviously we have cubes and all this sort of lovely stuff, but we want a sphere. Now, if you do have a look around, you can see that the edges here might be hard to see because of the color. If we go wireframe, you can see here that it is quite jagged, okay? So what we're gonna wanna do is increase what is called the subdivisions. And the subdivisions is the amount of planes that make up the 3D object. A plane being this little square here, the, all these little squares that make up the sphere. So let's increase the subdivision while we're in wireframe mode so you can see what it does. So to do that, we're gonna head on over to the inspector and we've got our base subdivisions and we've got our height subdivisions. Because it's a sphere, we're gonna to wanna to increase these to the same point. So I found that 40 seemed to be a pretty good point to get a nice smooth looking sphere. And you can see now that we have a nice smooth gradient. Keep in mind though, the more subdivisions, although technically meaning a smoother object, it will be harder for the computer to render. So you need to find that happy medium. Awesome, so the next thing to do is to make this look like the Earth, and it's actually really simple. If you head on over to Google and type in Earth Map, and go to Images, what you wanna download is a f something that looks like this. So it's sort of like a flattened version of what the Earth would look like. Higher resolution, the better. Find one that works for you. So I have downloaded mine, and to do that, we're gonna bring it into the scene. So we're going to open the finder up, go to where I've located it, media, and here I have my three maps. So we're gonna start with the earth one. So I'm gonna click and drag that into the scene. First thing we're gonna do is rename this so I know exactly what this is. So I'm just gonna rename it to earth map. Now I know exactly what that is. To make the sphere look like the earth, you we just need to connect this to the shape. You'll notice we have two inputs. We have a material input and we have a scene input. The material input is the one we want. By connecting an image into the material input of the shape node, it will then display the image that you plug in. So let's do that here. Connect it in, boom. Straight away we have an earth. And the reason that this works so well, even although if you do zoom in, you do get a little bit of weird artifacting here especially around the polar caps, but it works really well. And that's because that particular image is designed to look exactly like this when applied to a sphere. 
Now that we've done that, let's quickly, if, even if you go through after the fact and change the shape, it'll still apply, but the way it applies could be a little bit different. So cylinder, same thing, get some weird kind of wacky sort of things going on. So we're gonna go stick to sphere. Now we're gonna pretty much leave it as is. Now we're gonna to wanna to add clouds to this scene. Clouds are gonna be done the exact same way as we've done this, except we're gonna use a cloud map. So instead of typing in earth map, if you just type in cloud, it's gonna come up. And you want a black and white image. You do not want any color in this image because the black will be transparent or see-through and the white is going to be opaque. So you, lots of different patterns. Download one that you want. And once you've done that, we're gonna drag that into the scene. Here's mine, boop. Done, and we're gonna rename this one as well. So we're gonna rename this to clouds map. Now, we need to plug this into a, another shape 3D. To do that, I'm just gonna copy the original one and paste it. And I'm going to plug the clouds into the material input. So we've got this ready to go. Then just drag the output of that shape node to the output of the original one. And what that is going to do is merge them together and give it a sec to sort of do its thing. So now clearly we've there's something weird going on. So we need to do a few different things. Number one is we need to make sure that the clouds map, so this sphere is slightly larger than this sphere, otherwise we will not see what's underneath. So find the shape 3D, so the earth one. Let's go to the scale. So under the first tab here. So the current radius is set to one. That's nice and easy to work with. So if we go to the second one, we're going to make it, we're gonna do something like 1.05. So it's gonna be ever so slightly larger. And if we plug the merge 3D node now into our little scene here, we can kind of get a better idea of what's going on. So to get this to look properly, we're gonna to go to the shape 3D node. Actually, let's rename this one. So we're gonna rename this clouds so it's easy to track and we can rename this one earth all right so with the clouds sphere we're going to go down under the first tab in the inspector down to blend mode i believe yes and we're going to change it from additive to screen and we can change the gain the gain is going to be the amount so it's almost going to act like opacity so it kind of goes a little transparent and we can kind of start to see how big this sphere is over the original so we can actually go up to the top here and what we're going to want to do is kind of make it I'm gonna shrink it really low, just like that. And we're gonna turn the gain back up. All right, so now we have the clouds. It's starting to look more and more like the earth. We're gonna do a few things. We're gonna add a camera to the scene. The camera is going to allow us to, I guess, animate this scene. So to do that, we're just gonna move this over and we're going to type shift space, type in camera, 3D camera. The first one comes up, click and enter and connect it to the merge 3D node. Now the Merge 3D node doesn't matter where you connect it, it's just gonna automatically connect it in. And now if we select the camera in 3D space, we're gonna to want to move it because clearly currently right now it's sitting in the middle of our earth, which is not what we want. So let's drag it back a bit. We'll see a real world, there we go, cool. So now we are getting a good interpretation of where the earth is sitting, looking good. There is a little bit of a weird artifacting here. I think maybe we need to make the clouds ever so slightly bigger. So we're gonna go 0.2, mm, seem to make it worse. Awesome, so now we've got this. What we're gonna to wanna to do is now do some animating. So to do the animating, we're going to have the clouds rotate around the earth and then we're gonna have the earth rotate as well. So to do that, what we're gonna do is going to grab the sphere, so the cloud sphere, and we're gonna head on over to our transform tab and under the rotation, we are going to add a little expression. So we're gonna say X equals Y. So drag that down. Ooh, let's reset that first, cool. And then we're gonna double click in the Y and go Y equals enter to Z. So now when we rotate the Z axes, they all kind of rotate together. So we get more of a diagonal rotation. So all I really want you to do now is we're gonna to go to the start of our scene, set a keyframe for all three, move forward to the very end, and we're gonna move that Z transform. Now, I'm gonna over-exaggerate it. We don't need to, but I'm gonna over-exaggerate it so that when we're playing this through, we're getting some, you can see the clouds are turning. 
Awesome, so hopefully you guys are following along, you know we're gonna do the exact same thing with our Earth Sphere. Over to the Transform, same with the Rotation, let's reset that all together. Equals, Enter, together. Double click, equals, Enter, together. Enter, and now we're going to set the same thing at frame zero, I'm gonna set keyframe for all three. And we're gonna move forward. And this time I'm actually gonna go in the opposite direction so the earth is rotating kind of differently at the very least. Cool. So now if we change this so that it is a little bit easier to see and hit play, now you can see we have our earth moving. Obviously the clouds are quite exaggerated, but that's just the point of this video. So we're nearly done with this scene. Well, all we're gonna to wanna to do now is we're going to animate the camera. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set the camera probably back here at frame zero. So let's go to frame zero and we are going to zoom out a little bit. And we're going to set a keyframe for the Z translation, the Z being the blue axis. So what we're gonna do is we are going to set it there, set a keyframe, we're gonna move forward, a little bit, not long. We're gonna come in real close, perfect. And then from there, it's gonna automatically keyframe. And then from there to the end of the scene, we're just going to move in ever so slightly. So what we end up with is this camera that flies in right at the start and then slows in, but still zooms in. Quite a dramatic camera move, it looks kind of cool. Almost done guys, just a Two more things to do. What we're gonna do is go to the spline editor and we're gonna find the camera. So click the camera so we can see it. Click this button to zoom to fit. Then we're going to select drag these two here, shift S, animation so that it looks a little nicer and not super, super drastic. Cool, that's done. Last, things, last thing is we're going to add a glow to the earth so that it has a little sort of a something else to it. So to do that, we're gonna add it after the render of 3D. So obviously everything here is in 3D. The render of 3D now converts it to a 2D image, which we can apply a glow to. So hit that, shift space, type in glow. I'm gonna do this one here. And that looks quite intense. We're gonna change some things. So the apply mode, we're actually gonna to go to merge under. What that does is sort of makes the glow sort of underneath it, and we're going to turn off the alpha glow. We're gonna turn off the green, and we're gonna turn off the red, so it's a blue glow. And we're just gonna increase the size a little bit, and the glow amount. So now it's quite exaggerated for this example, but that's the idea. Cool, pretty much done with this one, guys. If we head on over to our project, we have our earth coming in. Now, if we wanted to add stars underneath, I find the easiest way, honestly, if you're not animating with the stars, is you can just drag an image in. So you could bring in some stars. So we could go to the desktop. Let's bring in some stars. Chuck that one in. Slap that underneath and just like quickly zoom in on it, like so. And now if we are to play this through, we have our flying in, our earth rotating and flying in. Very cool. So hopefully this has shown you a little bit about 3D objects inside of Fusion and how to create a 3D Earth. Now, ironically enough, this same principle does apply to other planets. So if you were to type in Jupiter map and go to images, you're gonna get a Jupiter map. Same with moon and all these other different planets. So you can go off and create your own planet. And yeah, I'd love to see what you guys are creating. So make sure you leave that down below for me to check out. So there you go guys, that's how you create a 3D Earth or planet in DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, it's a pretty simple process and you can create a bunch of other different planets with this sort of method. Um, make sure you tag me if you decide to create something, I'd love to check it out. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and until the next one, see ya.